Let's start off with another live look at Harlandale ISD. Back to school right around the corner. Oh, and they're holding their back to school bash happening at the Sosa Family Engagement Center. Obviously going on right now. It is packed there. People trying to beat the heat and it goes on until 1130 a.m. I love that the community is out there. They're, you know, getting everything they need to get done before school because they can register their parents. Their parents can register their kids. They can get free school supplies out there, free immunis immunizations, haircuts and more. Get it done early to beat the heat. All right. You know what, why don't you just take this over? The two, two of your favorite things coming together. Skittles, a new flavor joining <laughs> Skittles Rainbow. The candy, the candy has partnered with French's to make a new tangy mm. flavored Skittle. You missed the key component there. It's mustard flavored. There we go. Yeah, so the collaboration and celebration of National Mustard Day on August 5th. I didn't know there was a National Mustard Day. Now, the more you know, Max. The more you know. So the new Skittle, only available at French's Mustard Mobile. Is that kind of like the... Mustard Mobile. Sure. Oh, it's like the... the, the Oscar Wiener Mobile. The Wiener Mobile. Yeah. Okay. In select cities, it's making stops in Atlanta, July 31st, Washington, August 2nd, NYC, August 5th. Sadly, Sarah Costa? No! Doesn't seem like San Antonio is on that list. Yeah. But don't worry. You can still enter <gasps> online. There's Wait, a sweepstake. Can we do that during the break? You can win a package of the mustard flavored Skittles. Okay, if we win this, I really want to win the mustard Skittles. I we're don't gonna, want you. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to. You're trying them on on air. Fantastic. On August fifth. On August fifth. Okay. Also trying our luck with the Mega Million jackpot. It's past one billion dollars on Friday night because nobody won the top prize. It was at over 900 million. The numbers were 5, 10, 28, 52, 63, and 18 for that mega ball. Although there was no winning ticket for the jackpot, five people at least won a million dollars. The next drawing is scheduled for Tuesday. We had a pool here at KSAT. Mm. I think we won 50 bucks. That's enough to buy some mustard right. flavored Skittles. Right. Or just put it towards the next one. The next one. Okay. Another one. Another one. All right, time now, 8.57, 80 degrees. We'll be right back. We head out the door this morning, and we're on about a major closure on Loop 1604. Both sides of 1604, more near Blanco Road, they are closed. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos, our traffic authority. We're learning more about a victim from an overnight shooting. We'll tell you if police have any information about the suspect. And we are taking a live look at Harlandale ISD, the district holding a back-to-school bash. We're going to check back in in just a few moments. But really what we were talking about this morning, summer flying by, families getting ready to go back to school. Obviously, organizations like that, the resource fair is so integral for kids getting their backpacks, right. getting their resources, and honestly, doing it this early is so smart. So smart, and I love that all of the parents and the families in the Harlandale community are taking advantage of all of those free resources, um, and we'll hopefully get back to that in just a bit. But Sarah, it's going to be another triple-digit day. Yeah, glad to see everybody's out there now before it gets too hot. Temperatures expected to once again reach 100. First, I want to start you with some positive news. Let's talk about the pollen count. Pollen count is low. Molds are the only allergen present and they are low. Saharan dust, which will put a haze on the horizon, shouldn't do much to your allergies today either. So today we'll make 34 100 degree days. That's including today's forecast. Now we've still got a long way to go before we can even crack into the top three of 100 degree days. Back in 2009, we had 59 100 degree days and just last year we had had 58 100 degree days. So it'll take a a, a lot to be able to get close to that, but it's still at least in the realm of possibilities. Today's forecast 81 at 9. Uh, right now it is 81 degrees, 88 at 11. And for the afternoon high, we'll be reaching 100 degrees today with partly cloudy skies. So a nice weekend to enjoy some time by the pool. Today will be 100, tomorrow 101. But a lot of people out and about for weekend. Let's go ahead and check in with your traffic authority, Stephen Cavassi for how the roads will shape up.
Road work along Loop 1604 is expected to continue throughout the weekend. Now it's not happening here at Pat Booker Road, but we're going to see it over here along the northwest side. This is because of the north expansion project that is taking place. Remember, we have bridge demolition. This is going to ramp up tonight, Friday, July 28th, and it's going to take us to Monday, July 31st. So this is a full weekend project. It starts overnight around 9 in the evening. We should see it wrap at 5 in the morning. During that time, eastbound main lane full closure from Bitters Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And remember, there's also going to be work taking place over on the west side of 1604. Loop 1604, we will see that work continue on the westbound main lanes, and it's going to happen during the same time, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. This will be from the Blanco Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And you see it there, folks, full weekend closure. So those barriers will likely be in place through the remainder of the project there. But I know that's a lot of information to take in. So what you can do right now, scan that QR code, takes you to our KSAT traffic page. All the information about what's happening along Loop 1604 is on our website. So know what to expect before you have to hit the roads. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions following a late night shooting. So this happened a little after 10 at an apartment complex on Blanco Road that's not far from Jackson Keller Road. Police tell us two men heard shots being fired and quickly went inside an apartment. That's when one of them realized he had been shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Now police are still searching for that shooter. Protesters gathered outside the Texas governor's mansion yesterday in response to the administration's stance on border security. So organizations like the Border Network for Human Rights, Nonviolent Austin and Mothers Against Greg Abbott united outside of the governor's mansion to condemn Abbott's Operation Lone Star. They are calling the policy a crime against humanity and are demanding the operation cease immediately. Well, wildlife and environmental groups suing the Federal Aviation Administration over SpaceX's launch last month from Texas. An attorney for the Center for Biological Diversity said the groups were suing over what they consider to be the FAA's failure to fully consider the environmental impact of the Starship program near Boca Chica Beach. Now, all of this in South Texas, they asked the court to throw out the five-year license that the FAA granted to SpaceX. A construction company in Georgetown has created the world's largest community of 3D printed homes. I saw this on Instagram. It's really cool. They say 3D printing can build homes faster, is more affordable, and is better for the environment. That's because 3D printing does not create the same amount of emissions as cement does. Some of the homes are already sold and people will move into them in September. The neighborhood is located 30 miles north of, of, of Austin. All right, we're going back out to Harlandale ISD. Look at that. Look at the amount of families out there. So the district holding a back to school bash happening at the Sosa Family Engagement Center and it goes on until 1130 this morning. So parents are going to are able to register their kids for classes in schools. They get free school supplies, immunizations, free haircuts and more. Now backpacks will also be given on a first come first serve basis. See a lot of the kiddos there probably with the backpacks they just got. So we spoke to District 3 Councilman Phyllis Villagran about this event. Harlandale has always been about getting out to the community. And so this year they're, they came to the center. They, do, they try and do something like this every year to make sure kids get registered and kids get ready to go back to school. These events are so important for our communities, especially with parents that have multiple children going into the school district. Just Get them out there early, get all the school supplies, the free backpacks, all the immunizations, haircuts, because I mean, all that also really adds up budget wise, Max. Um, so you can see the community really taking advantage of this awesome event. Absolutely, time now, just about 9.07, already 81 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next. A free show in San Antonio that's finally gonna get your kids to put down their phones. That's coming up. And let's head back outside. Like we've been saying, wow, not a cloud in the sky. 81 degrees now. How warm will it get out there? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. There's a child inside of all of us, and a new play at the Classic Theater of San Antonio really brings that to life. So come with me and let's get a sneak peek at Peter and the Star Catcher. Boy starts out as, you know, a not like the normal Peter Pan that we all know of. He's a little grumpy, he's a little upset, he's an orphan. 
and then you know we see him change and grow throughout the entire show to become that character that we all know and love. This show is magical, it's performative, it's whimsical, it reminds all of us what it is like to be a child and to play in your backyard with your friends and to create these magical stories and these adventures for yourself. It's a really unique piece of theater in that there are not a lot of lights and you know uh, technical things, but what happens is that we use everyday objects to really tell the story in exciting and magical ways. Tickets are absolutely free. This is a free gift to the city of San Antonio from the Classic Theater, so please come and take advantage of it. Watching a movie is so much fun, but there's something different about going into a theater space and getting to connect in real time with real people who are right in front of you. It is unlike any feeling that you can ever imagine. The best part about this play is just how close you're going to feel to these actors, almost like you're part of the play. For showtimes, visit our website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> you did theater. I, I thought we were going to talk about that. Yeah. I, I did. I loved theater. I am at Clark I'm High so School. shocked. <laughs> Me? A theater kid? No. No. Oh my goodness. Not dramatic in the least bit. <laughs> Speaking of dramatic, here's how much rain we would need in order to get out of drought if we were just to get uh, all the rain in August. We would need 10 inches of rain in San Antonio in August to see drought end uh, around San Antonio, New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Seguin. We would need a foot of rain in August to end the drought in the Hill Country, where the drought is the worst, Kerrville, Bandera, Bernie, Fredericksburg, and Blanco. And then we need about seven and a half inches of rain south of San Antonio. Drought is not all that bad. South of San Antonio, it's still not great across the Winter Garden region, but that's a lot of rain. To need seven to 12 inches of rainfall in, in the month of August, which is typically dry as it is, the probability of that happening is less than one percent. Honestly, at that point, we would need a tropical system or something like that uh, to bring us that much rain, and we just don't have any rain chances in the coming days. Rain chance is practically zero in San Antonio through this upcoming week as we start August. It's already 81 degrees. We started off right near 76, 77, so warming up quickly. Southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. It's 79 in Rock Springs, 83 already in Del Rio, 82 in Catula. It's 81 in Gonzalez and 81 in New Braunfels. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Next couple hours will be in the 80s, but then we'll be at 90 by noon. And this afternoon, it's going to be partly cloudy and hot. We'll reach 100 degrees by 5 p.m., 6 p.m. at 100. And even this evening, struggling to cool down that quickly after sunset, it'll still be in the low 90s by 9 p.m. Here's a look at your neighborhood highs. If you're lucky in Bernie Holotus, you won't hit 100 degrees, but by that point, it's all a mental game because honestly, what's the difference between 99 and 100? Going to be 100 in Hondo, 100 in Utopia, 100 in Seguin, 102 in Nixon Smiley, 101 in New Braunfels, 102 in Pleasanton and Floresville, and 100 in Uvalde. The one silver lining of the forecast is that humidity will not be high in the afternoon. Dew points are going to come down into the 50s, near 50 degrees during the peak heat of the day. Won't have to worry about humidity. That's good news. No heat index, no high feels like temperature. Remember back in uh, June when we had a, our hottest heat index ever recorded of 116 degrees. No, thank you. Looking at the weather setup dry over the state of Texas as that heat high has settled overhead. I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, we could see some potential relief in during the second week of August. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next half hour. But what you need to know is that's a long way away. Most of the United States is going to be experiencing those summer like temperatures even hotter than average. Highs in San Antonio are going to get up a degree or two as that heat high settles overhead by Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be 103 degrees outside. Looking ahead to the forecast, Saharan dust will dissipate tomorrow. We'll have more on that in the next half hour. And again, just going to be very toasty through the foreseeable future for us. I keep on reminding myself that eventually the northern hemisphere will tilt away from the sun mm. and will have fall. It will but happen. But it will happen. That is inevitable. It's just going to take a while for that to happen. September. Let's go northern hemisphere. Tilt away tilt, from the sun. Tilt, tilt. I don't know why you're looking at me. I'm not going to chant with you. Time now, 9.15. Max. Max is not a theater kid. Out. Well, neither was I. But I think it's just because we're hungry. Okay. 
All right, well, we're getting hungry here on GMSA. Still to come, David Elder has a preview of what's cooking. There it is. There we go. I was waiting for it. Oh, that looks good. Oh, yeah, that's coming up oh, on Texas Eats. Oh, my goodness. The bone marrow? Looks like it. You know what else looks good? All these families out and yes, about. Love to see it. Yeah, they are getting their back to school shopping, I guess, done early. So this is all happening at the Sosa Family Engagement Center for Harlandale ISD. They're hosting their back to school bash through the morning. That's right. It's going until, until 11.30 a.m. Parents will be able to register kids, get free school supplies, immunizations, haircuts, and more. Backpacks, I wonder if they still have some left. They're on a first-come, first-served basis. We see a lot of people out there. So I don't know if there's any left at this <laughs> point. But we did speak with District 3 Councilman Phyllis Villagran. We need to get out and make sure our kids are back to school. Harlandale Independent School District is doing a great job making sure that they're here. And we need you, the parent, to come on and bring them over, get the backpack, get the immunization, get registered, and get ready for next fall. Good morning and welcome back. So you've probably heard half of all marriages end in divorce. but. There are some things that you can do to keep the love alive. As Leslie Hudson reports, Alexa may be the key. Uh, oh. Children, finances, schedules, jobs, it can all add up to marital conflict. Probably like the classic where to eat. I mean about everything to be honest. Studies show the top three common arguments between married couples were chores, responsibilities, and children. New research shows that with a little help from their phones, these arguments can be squashed. Is the alarm clock going off too early? Apple Watch has silent alarms now that can wake up without all the noise. Can't remember the kids' schedules? Create shared family calendars containing specific instructions both partners can update frequently. Can't agree on groceries? Create a document and inventory sheet of everything you already have in the fridge so no one overspends or repeats. And if you ever need extra affirmation, Alexa can be programmed to answer anything you program her to. Alexa, are you listening to me? Also, try texting throughout the day for nothing else to make your significant other know you're thinking of them. With ways technology can bring back the honeymoon phase, I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. All right, time now, just about 921, 82 degrees. Well, if you need plans for lunch Let's today, go. Oh, I'm so hungry. David Elder tries a couple of new staples in oh, Castle goodness. Hills. See, this is my gripe. When he shows us this amazing food, oh, we got pickled oh, onions too. Max I'm in. Is such a pickle. And he onion. doesn't bring us samples. We need the samples. We'll be right back. And I want to start with these tacos right here in the front because you got three tacos on there, but those are loaded up. What's going on with this dish? All right, these are tacos azulejos. These are ribeye tacos, grilled onions, your guacamole, and it comes for all the fatty lovers, a grilled bone marrow. What's the salsa here? These are habanero salsa. Would you like some? Um, yes, of course. <laughs> You look hesitant. Is it hot? It is a little on the hotter side for spicy lovers. We always give it in small portions because of the spice. I just want a little bit. You want a little, yeah. just a little dabble, do you? A little bit. Here we go. Tacos Los Azulejos. That's the bite. Mm. That is incredible. The tacos azulejos are so good. It's that ribeye meat seared off, served medium rare inside of two corn tortillas. And then on top, you have the onions, you have the guacamole, and then on the side, a little bit of habanero salsa. Plus you have the bone marrow that you could scoop some of that off and throw that in there. It is an incredible taco, especially if you love ribeye. Okay, we're talking a lot of things here. First of all, bone marrow, what are your thoughts? I think it can be good. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of the time, one, it's always very expensive. Two, yes. it's never really worth what I like. I want it to be. But I have seen it's people a lot of work. make the bone marrow and then use that almost as like a compound butter to cook the steak. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really a bone marrow. The ribeye looks fantastic, looks though. Looks so good. 
Um, you know me though, put pickled onions on anything, I'm in. You're, you're all about those pickled onions. Corn or flour tortillas? Corn. Okay, Every me time. too. Every time. All right, time now. My mouth is watering now. <laughs> Dang it, David. All right, 926, 82 degrees. Hey, we're taking a live look out at Harlandale ISD. The district holding a back to school bash. It's happening at the Sosa Family Engagement Center now until 11.30 a.m. Look at all the families out there. Love to see it. It is amazing. So this is going on. We know Bernie ISD, they're holding a similar festivity going on in their resource center. Parents will be able to register for their kids, get free school supplies, immunizations, haircuts, so much more. So hopefully, because this started a couple hours ago, backpacks were given away first come first serve basis and we saw the backpack table it was packed it was packed because you know these parents are smart let's take advantage of those oh, yeah. free supplies and resources especially if you have several kiddos in the school district it's going on until 11 30 this morning and they're smart they're doing it early trying to beat the heat speaking of which we're going to check in with sarah spivey in just a few moments Morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning. It is July 29th, and like we've been saying, pretty much the whole morning, back to school right around the corner. It, I cannot believe it. No. I'm sure the kiddos this morning don't want to hear that, Max. No, but the families, they're probably like, you know what, we're ready. Well, it's been a uh, summer. It's been a, it's been a hard summer. It's been Plus, so hot. With the summer, usually come fall or temps. Okay. Right? Some optimism there. Yeah, let's look forward to the school year starting so maybe we can get to fall. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. what did you say, the northern hemisphere will tilt on its axis away from the sun? It will eventually. We will eventually get fall. By the way, our first average uh, cold front comes at the end of September. So we still got a little ways to go before then. But hey, here's some good news in the pollen count today. Molds are low. They're at uh, 240. If you're curious about Saharan dust, now there is a little bit of dust out there right now. You can actually see on the horizon that we've got some dust there on the horizon. But the good news is air quality is not really going to take much of a hit. Air quality should be moderate today. That's not bad at all. It's not even going to be unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. So again, decent in the, in the pollen count and in the Saharan dust. And what's more is Saharan dust is expected to dissipate in the coming days so that by tomorrow night, it will not be noticeable at all. And through the week ahead, we'll have very, very light to no Saharan dust concentrations. Starting off your day, it's already 81 degrees in San Antonio, 79 in Kerrville, 83 in Del Rio, and 83 in Gonzales. But looking at the forecast for the day today, 90 by noon, 100 by 5 p.m. Today is going to be our 34th 100 degree day with very little end in sight. Although there is some hope for the second week of August. I'll tell you what I mean coming up. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Before you head out the door this morning, big reminder about a major closure on Loop 1604. Both sides of 1604 near Blanco closed. Crews are going to be demolishing a bridge throughout the weekend. The goal is to have it done by Monday morning. So if you're heading that way, keep in mind the westbound lanes of Loop 1604 will be closed between the Blanco Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. The westbound lanes will also be closed between the Northwest Military Highway exit ramp to the Northwest Military Highway entrance ramp. Eastbound Loop 1604 will be closed between Bitters Road exit ramp and the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And traffic will be detoured onto the frontage road. The closure started Earlier this morning, text that says these lanes, like I've been saying, closed through 5 a.m. Monday morning. You can see a map. You can see all the explanations, comments, questions, concerns. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, new this morning, a man waking up behind bars, now facing charges of aggravated robbery. Here's the thing. Police, investigators, they're not done. They believe this man on your screen could be linked to other crimes around the south side. So this is 18-year-old Joe Rodriguez. According to the arrest affidavit, Rodriguez and two other suspects walked up to some people outside of a truck and threatened them with guns, then stole the vehicle. Investigators believe he may have been involved in other robbery cases in the area as well. Topping your morning headlines, former President Donald Trump is trying to reverse court rulings in two of the many politically charged cases involving him. So he filed a notice yesterday appealing a ruling that prevented him from moving his New York criminal case involving hush money payments to federal court. He pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to conceal the reimbursement of hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. His trial in Manhattan is set to begin in March. 
All right, we're headed to Ukraine, where the country is moving its official Christmas holiday to December 25th. So this is a big break from the Russian Orthodox Church, which celebrates it in early January. So new legislation was submitted to Ukrainian parliament and signed by Ukrainian President Zelensky. So yesterday, the parliament's website said the idea is, quote, to abandon the Russian heritage of imposing the celebration of Christmas on January 7th. And we are getting in the holiday spirit, celebrating Christmas in July. It's nice. Think about that. Oh, yeah, think so, about the winter. So hot outside. So right now there are deals for every Santa super fan out there. Right now there are deals for everyone. I'm so excited because, you know, always looking for deals. Will Gans breaking it all down. Paging Mariah Carey. Oh. For Santa super fans, the countdown to Christmas starts now. One, two, three, Christmas! Christmas. There's just kind of a pent-up demand. It's been almost seven months since Christmas, and now they're ready to go again. Spanning 60,000 twinkly, tinsley square feet, Decorators Warehouse in Arlington, Texas, may be far from the North Pole, but it is the Christmas in July destination. Yeah, we have a lady actually gets on a jet and flies in from Dubai, from Seattle, from Mississippi, and another one from Tennessee just this weekend. And a Christmas shopping spree could actually make for a cool Yule this scorching summer. If you put up a Christmas tree in your living room now, you would feel a little bit cooler just because of the associations to it. Reading the Polar Express, seeing people skiing and ice skating would evoke a different kind of temperature experience. And it's not just about the spirit of the season. Better Homes and Gardens saying that starting those Christmas DIY projects now is a way to gift yourself a stress-free December. And these neighbors agree. It's it takes fun. that long to get ready. Everybody come out! Like Santa says, make your list, check it twice, and get all your ducks in a row before the holiday season. That way you're prepared. July shoppers coming in hot with a garland game plan. Real touch garlands, picks, stems. It's the greenery, I think. Like they're gone by September. Yeah. You gotta get it early. The it item of 2023, according to our Santa stand-in, these cluster lights. These things will last you just about forever. They're amazing indestructible. And this year's trendiest way to deck the halls? Platinum, for sure. That's our number one seller. Just champagnes, mixed metals. Um, Nutcracker's huge for 2023, so that's a big look. Phenomenal. I love it. Next time you do a story, I want you to do exactly okay. that. Okay. Deal. Challenge. All right. Step. Challenge accepted. There we go. 937, 83 degrees. Listen up, night owls. You're in for a treat. We'll tell you everything you need to know about this weekend's meteor shower. So the cool thing about plants is plants don't talk to you, but they have great sign language. Love it. Plants talk to us through sign language. Okay. So we're getting ready to head to the garden after the break. Some simple things. I learned about protecting your plants during this brutal heat and exactly how much water they need to survive these triple digit temps. All right, speaking of the heat wave, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Like we've been saying, really no reprieve in sight. 83 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey with your full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So is the triple digit temps. Keep stacking up day after day after day. Our right. native heat and drought tolerant plants, they're fighting to survive. They really are. So I spoke with the local nursery about exactly how much water your plants need. And I've got some tricks to help your backyard beat the heat. So take a look. Beating the scorching heat by lots of hand watering. It's what they are doing at Fanix Nursery once, sometimes twice a day. Okay, so if you want your drought and heat tolerant plants to survive these triple digit temperatures, don't just give them daily shallow waterings. You're gonna wanna give them some deep waterings every couple of days. It takes me a good eight to 10 minutes to deep water by hand this full sun section of my heat and drought tolerant plants. So the deep soak a plant 12 inches down on a slow drip or you know, hand watering would probably make you stand there two to four minutes at least. And that's just for plants in the ground. The manager of Fanix, Mark Fanix, says for potted plants, 
They need to be watered once a day. Some of the tropicals and non-natives like bougainvillea, especially when they are in full sun, twice a day, or just bring them into the shade. But most importantly, listen to your plants. So the cool thing about plants is plants don't talk to you, but they have great sign language. This is a good example of your plant talking to you. The leaves are wilting. It's not even noon yet, but we're in the 90s. And this is not a native plant, but usually does pretty well here in the heat. But don't worry, once I give it a good watering, in a couple of minutes, these leaves will be nice and full again. Bannock says some roses need three times the amount of water than native plants and will need extra care this summer. Our roses in San Antonio are really struggling with this heat. They are not native. They need a lot of water. So how much water? You can tell my Peggy Martin roses have lost a lot of foliage because they're really struggling. So take a wooden spoon, mark it about six inches. You're going to want to put this in the soil six inches. When you pull it up, if that end is moist, you're good. But you can see here, not even two to three inches in and it's bone dry. So I'm going to give this a deep watering. But not all plants need daily or deep watering, especially those drought tolerant ones in the shade, because overwatering can also cause the leaves to wilt or brown as well. But there are tools to help. So for your plants that are in the shade for most of the day, like these are, you can use a moisture meter and it's going to tell you when they need water. For example, this cone flower, which is native and drought tolerant, it's at a four, so it's very moist. I probably won't water this for a couple of days. Another example, this verbena next to it, also at a four. It's moist enough to where Mr. Toad likes to sleep in here. I poor love Mr. Mr. Toad. Poor Mr. Toad. Mm. Um, he only comes out, I know, well, he comes out a lot, but I really know when it's going to rain, Sarah, Yeah. because he's out early. He's excited. He's like, oh, getting early. Can't start. wait for the rain. rain. And we got a lot of rain last Sunday in spots. He, he was out. He yeah. loved it. Yeah. I, think I always give him a good splash with there the you hose go. when well, I see him. I'm like, hey. Tell Mr. Cool. Toad. Stay cool out there, dude. Tell him not to look at his screen because this is a look at the potential rainfall over the next seven days in San Antonio and across Texas. You can see that big old hole right over Texas. That means no rain for us, unfortunately, over the next seven to 10 days. Not only for us in San Antonio, but up north toward Dallas, San Angelo, Lubbock, Houston, Corpus Christi. That's how you know that heat dome is in charge when the rain chances go away. And that's going to be the case for us over the next several days. It's 81 degrees outside in San Antonio. Pretty clear out there right now. A little haze on the horizon from some light Saharan dust. It's 79 in Bernie Stage Airfield. Started off in the 60s up in Bernie today. Very nice, but it's already near 80 degrees. 84 in Castroville, 82 in Divine, 81 at Stinson, 82 in Yavaldi, and 85 in Gonzales. For your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny, 90 degrees at noon. And then this afternoon, we're going to warm up to 100 degrees by 4, 5 p.m. It'll be in the triple digits until 6, and then temperatures will try to cool down. It's still going to be 93 in San Antonio after the sun sets tonight around 830. Today's 100 will make 34 100 degree days so far this year. And let's take a look at neighborhoods. 104, the hot spot on the map this afternoon near Laredo. 103 in Del Rio, 100 in Gonzales, 99 in Canyon Lake and in Kerrville, 100 in Hondo, 102 Floresville, 100 Seguin 101 in New Braunfels. Good news is it's not going to be humid in the afternoon, even though it's humid right now. Dew points are going to come down into the 50s, so nice and pleasantly dry this afternoon with low humidity. Uh, in in spite of the fact that it is going to be still hot. So find some shade. If you're going to be outside, you won't have to worry about heat index. Take a look at the weather setup across the nation. Severe weather across areas nearer to Kansas City and across the Central Plains, also near to the Great Lakes and into the Northeast. But here, heat high is large and in charge. Now looking ahead to the week, that heat high is actually going to settle right over Texas. So we're going to be seeing temperatures get up even hotter. So we're talking 103 by Tuesday, 103 by Friday, and most of the state of Texas is going to be hot. A lot of us dealing with triple digit temperatures. We'll be keeping track of ERCOT for you and how they meet the demand for energy this upcoming week. It's not until the second week of August that we can even hold out hope for a weather pattern change. It's then that we'll see that heat high move off to the west and open up the atmosphere for the very small potential for rain. This we're not even talking about until about August 7th. So for the second week of August, that's 
when I'm hoping we can see a breakup of the weather pattern, at least temporarily. Until then, we've got to look at some of the silver linings. Number one, humidity will be low in the afternoon. And number two, Saharan dust is going to be exiting. So not even much of a haze on the horizon with uh, clearer skies Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. But until then, 100, 100 to 103 in uh, San Antonio. I got to let you guys know it was 100 yesterday and I actually was at the Alamo. I was at the Alamo because my niece Gitchen is visiting. Aww. She's eight years old. She's actually here in studio and uh, it's going to be uh, really hot to temperatures climbing to near 100 degrees uh, this afternoon. But hey, Gidget, how, what do you think about San Antonio's weather? She says it's really cool. It's really cool. She's just trying to get on her aunt's good side by saying that. So glad you're here, Gidget. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Gidget. Time now, 948, 84 degrees. Mother Nature putting on a show this weekend. Two meteor showers are expected to peak Sunday and Monday evenings. The best time to see them is around 2 a.m. The oh, only okay. downside is... Is that there at 2 a.m.? I mean, you might be up, Max. Yeah. <laughs> the nearly full moon may make them harder to see. Oh, that darn moon. But you don't need <laughs> special equipment to watch the showers. That's cool. So just try to get as far away from artificial light as possible, a.k.a. the city, and you can possibly keep your eyes on the sky. So... Get away, maybe like, you know, to the hill country. That should be good. Um, Sarah Spivey, any advice for people out there? I would honestly, I would just say, if you're staying up that late, yeah, try to make some effort to go out away from the city center because there's a lot of light pollution. Yeah, and the moon too. Yeah, it'll, you'll probably be able to see some Starlink satellites then as well. We do get a lot of pictures of people being like, what are these I've yeah. got a great Aliens. article. I've got a great article about the Starlink satellite. There's Starlink. On KSAT.com. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 949, 84 degrees. Okay, before we head to break, a reminder about an important traffic alert. This is a lot, well, this is not live. This was from last night. You can see the backup it caused a major closure on Loop 1604. Both sides of 1604 near Blanco Road are closed. We're keeping an eye on the situation out there. We'll be right back. Disney's The Haunted Mansion hits theaters and Madonna is feeling better. All right, there's a lot going on for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here is ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> no. oh, come on. One of Disneyland's most popular rides hits the big screen this weekend. Haunted Mansion, now a movie. Jamie Lee Curtis plays Madame Leota in the film, a medium trapped in her crystal ball. And Curtis tells us growing up in Southern California and going to Disneyland dozens of times as a child, the Haunted Mansion was always her favorite ride. The Haunted Mansion was the ride you ran to. You ran to it. You mm -hmm. would run through that park to get in line for the Haunted Mansion right when the gates opened. Haunted Mansion looking at a $30 million opening this weekend, but that won't be enough to take down Barbie or Oppenheimer. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. New streaming this weekend, The Beanie Baby Craze of the 90s is dramatized in Apple TV Plus's The Beanie Bubble, starring Zach Galifianakis, Elizabeth Banks, and Sarah Snook. While on Netflix, John Cena teams up with Jackie Chan for the action comedy Hidden Strike. Madonna feeling better while celebrating a big anniversary. Her debut album was released 40 years ago Thursday. And to mark the occasion, she posted a video on Instagram of her dancing to her song Lucky Star, writing that to be able to move her body and dance just a little bit makes her feel like the luckiest star in the world. The singer was hospitalized a month ago for a serious bacterial infection. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, just in time for beach season. Sharks are making a comeback. This is terrifying. Experts at the Virginia Institute of Marine Science saying one benefit of the public's growing interest in shark-related entertainment, like Shark Week, is the spotlight provided to researchers to bust some of the myths of the shark creatures. This one is, you know, sharks want to bite me. In this area, that's extremely small. I always like to say that you have a greater chance of being struck by lightning than being bit by a shark. All right, so the Marine Institute also says the public learning more about why sharks are important to the ecosystem combined with their naturally long lifespan. More sharks are being born and staying alive. Now, almost all the shark species, they're prohibited for keeping. So if you catch one, experts say just throw it back.
remember, we're in their territory. Yeah. So be cognizant true. of that. Be respectful of that. Okay. And if there's no sharks in the water, there might be a bear. Oh, look at this guy. Check out this bear going for a swim. He's like sitting. He's like straight up chilling in there. <laughs> Humans aren't the only creatures trying to find ways to stay cool in these extreme hot temperatures. All right. As you can see right here, one bear trying to beat the heat. He didn't do it in a smart way, though, because he's sitting in a jacuzzi, which I assume is off. So, but it's also pretty warm, too. No, that, that's actually bubbling. Oh, he's enjoying it. It's a lounge day. Yeah, it's a lounge day for sure. Right, so this was yesterday. This was Burbank, California. Police actually got a call about a bear in the area, <laughs> then stumbled upon him in his, you know, having a pool party. I love that he's just straight chilling in the corner. He just needs, like, a glass of, like, champagne, mm -hmm. something. What would you do if you had a bear in your pool? Um, like, immediate reaction. Immediate? I don't even know. Like, I would scream, but then I'd be like, oh, wait, don't scream. Right, because then it's going to come be at you. Be calm, but I'm like, this is also really cool. Yeah. Just let, let's be cool, bear. If you let's have a bear cool. in your pool, <laughs> send us pictures and a video. We'd like to see it. Exactly. All right, time now. I hope there are no one watching has a bear stumbling under their pool. <laughs> I hope not. Time now, 956, 84 degrees. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so just a reminder in the pollen count that molds are low. They're at 240. Those are the only allergens out there really in a big way, which is some good news there. And looking at the 12 case at 12 hour forecast, we'll be at 90 degrees by noon in the afternoon. It'll be 100 for the high. So a hot day today, our 34th 100 degree day uh, for San Antonio. We still got a long way until we can uh, meet up with uh, 2009, 2011, where we had 59, 58 100 degree days. Tomorrow's going to be 101 for the high, and it will be trying to find a way to stay cool by the pool today. Saharan dust will dissipate tomorrow. We'll be looking at anywhere from 100 to 103 in the forecast in the coming days. Y'all got any plans today? Oh, maybe go swim indoors. I've been doing sw indoor swimming. In an auditorium? Yes. Smart. Smart. Yes. I'm going to go out for lunch. Way to go. Yeah. Rave. Yeah. I'd like to eat. Gosh, you look like you're so excited about it, too. Yeah, I'm tired. We wake up really <laughs> early. Regardless, have a great rest of your day. Y'all have a good Saturday. We'll see you back here starting at 6 a.m.